Welcome back. In this episode, we create the booking function for the website. First, we install the plugin, optionally a translation. Then we adjust the settings, create a booking page, add links from the homepage, and test that it works and sends emails. Let's go. Let's go to the dashboard and install the booking plugin. Click on Plugins, then Add New and type in Amelia. Look for this logo and click on Install Now. Next, click Activate. The next step is optional and applies only if you want to have your website also in some other language than English. Type in Loco and Install and activate the plugin. Now, click on the new menu item for Loco Translate and click on Amelia. On this list, you'll see all the possible languages, so you can have the booking in the same language as your website. For this reference website, we're using English, so I'll simply deactivate and delete the plugin from the plugins list. Let's go to Amelia and open the settings. I'm going to change the general settings by setting the default time slot step to 15 minutes and use the service duration as default. From default appointment status, you can choose if bookings are automatically approved or if you want to approve them manually. Then we can change how many days ahead people can make bookings, which can be four months, for example, and you can set a default country code for clients' phone numbers and choose if it's required information. Activate time zone. And here it's important to bring people who made a booking back to the homepage by giving the right URL. And finally, you can hide the plugin's branding text and hit save. Next, let's open the services tab on the left menu and first add a category for services. Hit the blue accept button and then click on the add a service. Give it a name, add the category, add a picture optionally. Select a color, give a description and save. On the next tab, we can select the duration and price. On the Gallery tab, you can add more images. Let's finish up by saving our changes. Why not add another right away? So give a name, category, optional description, image, duration, price, and save. Back on the left side menu, click on Settings and open Provider Details. Here we can use our name or give a more general name as the free version only allows one provider. Let's change the email address, phone number, and save. Actually, it's a good idea that the country code is right if it's not selected in the general settings. Save and check again that it works. On the Assigned Services tab, you can select which services the provider can provide. Work hours dictate when users can book appointments. Let's start by changing Monday hours from 9 to 4 and hit the plus button to add a break in the middle of the day between 1 and 2 when users can add book times. Now we can select apply to all days and scroll down to change the settings for the weekend. Let's remove Sunday altogether and change the hours for Saturday to have a shorter day and earlier break. and save. Now to company settings. Give a name, select an image, address, website, phone with right country code, an email and save. In payment settings, you can change the currency of your country, in this case pound, and it's good to note that the free version of the plugin allows only on-site payments. If you pay for the license, you can accept Stripe and PayPal payments, for example. Hit save and let's go to notifications. These are the confirmation emails that are sent to you and the client. Select WP mail, give a sender name, sender email can be no reply or the real address. There's also an option to send all notifications to an additional email. 
We're done here, so click on Save. In Role Settings, it's probably a good idea to open the Customer tab and deactivate Automatic User Account Creation for people who make a booking. This reduces potential responsibility with user privacy and lets us pass with a simpler privacy policy later on. Click on Save. Next on the left side menu, let's open the Notifications view. Here you see the email template that is sent to the user if the appointment is approved. Another possibility is the pending email if you choose to approve the appointments first manually. You can change the content, but don't change the formatting of the dynamic tags that fall between the presented signs. Scrolling down, Amelia also has an option for events, and here's the template for booking. Rest of the templates are inactive on the free version. On the next tab, you can change what goes out to you or your team with access to the booking email inbox. Same for events, employees can book them. Let's edit them to give an example. So I'll open up again the booking confirmation for the employee and add a field from the first drop down menu to copy and paste the customer full name to the email. The formatting doesn't need bolding, by the way, it still works. And now we can hit save. Next, we can create the booking page. So from the top menu, we can select add a new page. Let's name it Appointment Booking and select Edit with Elementor. To make sure users find the emails, let's add a text element on top and write some instructions for them to check the chunk folder to just in case the email is considered spam. Next, open the widget menu and type in Amelia. We want to add the step-by-step -step booking by dragging it under the text or the next empty box. We don't see the preview here, so you can simply click Publish and go from the top menu to view our new booking page. Oopsie, something has happened to the top menu. It looks weird, so let's go fix that by going back to the dashboard by holding down Control key on the keyboard and clicking on the dashboard link to open it on another tab. Now from here, browse to Elementor, select Tools and hit Regenerate files and data and save changes. This happens, can happen at any time, so I wanted to leave it in this tutorial. By reloading the page, we can see the problem fixed and can now try to make a booking. First, we see our services, and then we can select the day and then a the time, give our details, email, and phone number. Then it's the summary and finally the confirmation page. By clicking Finish, the website returns to the home page. But we notice that it's not the page we want. So let's open the dashboard and go to Settings and Reading Settings. Here we can select the static page and change it to the new home page we are building and click on Save Changes. Now by clicking Visit Page, we see our new home page correctly. Let's go to Edit with Elementor to add the links to the booking page. Click on the button and type the new address on the link field. You can find it on the list and leave it like this if you wish, or you can shorten it to only slash and the slug of your page. It works both ways, but test it to be sure. From Style tab, we want to make the buttons more responsive to users by opening the Motion FX accordion, browse to the Hover tab and Hover Animation, open the list and choose Shrink. Now the button starts to react to our mouse cursor and we can add the same cool animation to our other buttons. These kind of small changes make any website better for user experience when they can interact with the website unlike on a fully static page. Update and next we need to link the top menu item on the header. We can't edit it directly from here, so let's exit the page and go to Appearance and Menus. Click on the menu item to open it and replace the URL with the same address we just used. Save Menu. Now we can open the home page again to try if it works. Perfect. 
Let's open Amelia from dashboard where you can see the bookings. You can change the time range by clicking on the dates and see the approved appointments. Click on view appointments to see their details. We can also see, for example, finances that tells us how much the online bookings are generating. Now everything seems to be working fine. So next we want to see if it's actually sending the emails. So let's log into OVH email. The last email is from the booking we just made and it works. Everything is in order. If you see anything you want to fix, you can edit the template in the notifications view. This part is done and I hope everything is working on your side as well. If you encountered any problems, join the Discord server to ask for an advice. See you on the next video.